Getting the right tyre setup can significantly impact how your bike feels and performs. In today's cycling world, we have four choices. We got Butol, TPU, Latex and Tubeless. Each option has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. And in this video, I want to thoroughly explore these factors. My goal is to help you understand which inner tube setups I recommend for specific situations and why they are the optimal choice. Since everyone's riding situation is different, you can use this information to make your own decisions about the most suitable inner tubes for your needs. If you're interested in delving deeper, you can find all the links to the rolling resistance test data in the description below. Let's start with butyl. Butyl is a synthetic rubber and honestly there's only very few benefits that there is to using these tubes. The main one being is that they're cheap. Let's get into them. The first advantage that we've got is as I've said before they are cheap so you can buy a lot of them for a fairly good price. Secondly because they've been around for so long not only are they cheap they're generally pretty damn reliable butyl inner tubes. If you buy one it's probably going to work. Next advantage is out of all of these options, they actually do hold the most air. So if you're doing multi-day rides, um, then you, or you don't like to pump your tires up as often, then these might suit you a bit better. Personally, I pump up at the start of every ride anyway, so it's not necessarily an advantage for me. They do fit a very wide range of tires as well. Generally, you can go from like 23 to like 32, which is a nice big range, especially in the modern world. And one final benefit to them is actually they're very easy repairable. Most repair kits that you buy, well, you can repair these inner tubes. You can generally, if you get a puncture, pretty reusable if you repair them. That's where the advantages end, however. Let's get on to the disadvantages. The first one is that they do have a very high rolling resistance and they are significantly higher than everything else I have on this list here. Next up, they take up a lot of space. You're going to see when I got onto TPU just how much space these take up. So generally you're going to be fitting one of these in your saddlebag, maximum two generally. And not only do they take up a lot of space, they are also fairly heavy. Once again, when I got onto TPU, you're going to see why, how heavy these are. And you actually feel this weight on the outside of the wheel rim and that's what makes your bike feel a bit more sluggish. Finally, the last disadvantage is that you actually can't cycle these, I believe, and people tend to collect them and struggle to find uses for them. Because of these disadvantages, I personally can't recommend these for any situation because it is outshined in every measurable way by my next type of inner tube, and that is TPU. Here's what the TPU looks like. It doesn't have to be pink, they come in loads of colors. TPU is a molded thermoplastic, so quite literally a plastic inner tube. But what's so good about them? Let's start with the advantages again. Their main advantage is weight. These are literally a third, if not more, the weight of a butyl inner tube. And that goes for both tires. That's quite literally a pretty much a 200 gram saving on your bike just from the inner tubes. Not only that, it's where you feel the weight the most. Next advantage is that these are very low in rolling resistance. They are almost as fast as a latex inner tube, which is the fastest option, which I'm getting onto later. So not only does it give you a weight advantage, it also gives you a speed advantage on top of that as well. The next advantage is just how much space they save. I mean, they're literally less than a third of the size of a normal butyl inner tube. So you can carry three of these for the space of one butyl inner tube. These are also recyclable as well, which is such a huge advantage. You're not just stuck with loads of like dead inner tubes. I think you do have to cut this plastic stem off, but the actual tube bit itself, I believe can be recycled. The TPU tubes also fit a wide range of tire widths, usually ranging from 23 to 32 millimeters. That's for the road setups anyway. And that's going to cover pretty much every tire out there. I don't know many people that run wider or narrower than that range. Another great advantage is that it comes with lots of options of valve lengths. Something simple, but you're going to find something that fits your wheel depth perfectly. These do also have a supple road feel, kind of like the latex inner tube, which is next. But it's not quite as supple as latex, but it does 
definitely feel better than a butyl in a tube. Another advantage, I know they're coming thick and fast here, is that supposedly they are more puncture resistant than a butyl in a tube. The logic being for this that I've heard is that when something sharp gets through, because it's much slippier, that sharp object doesn't grip onto and tear. It just kind of slips in and has the opportunity to slip back out. I don't know how true that is. The plastic itself is also meant to be a little bit more durable. Not only is there options for valve lengths and colors, there's also other options for weights. For example, these ride now in the tubes, they come in at a 36, a 24, or even a super light 19 gram inner tube. That's a pretty drastic weight saving. Finally, the last big major advantage, which is why I recommend these over Butyl all the time, is that the ride now inner tubes are just as cheap as a Butyl inner tube. This isn't the same with every brand. Certain brands such as Pirelli are extortionately expensive for a TPU in a tube. But if you just go for the cheaper Chinese brands, then you're gonna be saving a lot of money there. That brings us onto the disadvantages of these inner tubes. There's no denying that these cheaper inner tubes have had anecdotally a little bit less reliability than something you'll buy from a major brand. Me personally, the first one I ever installed of the Ride Nows actually went flat overnight. But out of the 12 inner tubes that I've used, that is one that I've had go dud so far. The rest have been totally fine. Another disadvantage is that they lose air slightly faster than a butyl tube. But as I said, this isn't an issue for me because I pump up before every ride. And another disadvantage is that they are repairable, but it doesn't always work perfectly every time. As I said, some brands can be hideously expensive out there, but the Chinese brands mainly ride now. Even if two out of 10 are faulty, then with a bad seal and you start to lose air too quickly, well, you're still just as well off as you were buying a butyl tube because of the price of them. Where do I use these? For almost every bike. My road bike, my winter bike, my commuter bike, it just fits perfectly for pretty much every situation, all apart from racing, which I'm gonna get onto later. I always carry these regardless as a spare, as three of these take up as much space and weigh as much as one butyl tube. If you wanna use them for racing, for reducing weight, they also are fast rolling resistance, so they have benefits there. And because they pretty much outclass butyl in every way, these are the way forward in my opinion. Next up is latex. And latex is, well, as it says on the tin, an inner tube made of latex. It's an extremely low hysteresis material. I will link a podcast below if you want to nerd out about hysteresis. Low hysteresis just basically means it's faster. And that brings me on to its main advantage. The rolling resistance, the speed of these inner tubes are just the fastest option that you can buy out there. It's its main selling point. If you want to go as fast as possible, these are the inner tubes for you. Also, if you don't want to run a tubeless setup, but still want the maximum speed, then this is the next best option. Also, this is subjective, but they have the best road feel in my opinion. They feel really supple and really comfortable on the road. They are repairable, but not as easily repaired as a butyl inner tube, but they can be repaired if you need it. GCN just did a great video on how to repair these inner tubes, so I'll link that below as well. Another advantage is that they are lighter than a butyl inner tube, but they're still twice, maybe three times as heavy as a TPU inner tube. Let's get onto the disadvantages. The first one being is that they are as big as a butyl inner tube, meaning you can't carry as many spares in your saddlebag. The next being that they are a little bit more expensive. So normally a butyl or a TPU you can get for about five pounds here in the UK. A latex tends to come in at around 12 to 15 pounds per inner tube. Another potential disadvantage is that these do lose more air pressure overnight than other tubes, which is why it's generally reserved for more race setups where you're gonna be pumping up your tires before the event anyway. Another thing I don't like with these is that their width range or, or tire width range is lower than most other types of tubes. So generally you have to buy like a 19 to 23 width or a 25 to 28 width. It just means you need more specificity when buying these inner tubes. And another disadvantage with specificity is that they have less valve length ranges. Most latex inner tubes come with a 40 or 45 millimeter valve length. Definitely not long enough considering most deep section wheels are about 50 mil nowadays. 
and this means you do need to put a valve extender onto the inner tube and this could potentially decrease its reliability and increase the amount of air loss over time. The valve extenders don't always work that well. Another disadvantage is that they are easy to tear the tube when installing as they are more delicate than butyl. But this can once again be easily solved if you're just careful when installing and putting the wheel back on the rim. Latex tubes are also said to be less puncture resistant, but once, a, once again, like I said earlier, if something goes through that tire, I think you're puncturing anyway. As I said at the beginning of this section, I think latex is a great option if you can't run tubeless and you still want the fastest race setup you can buy. But with that supposed decrease in puncture resistance, this brings me on to our last option, and that is tubeless. Tubeless is also self-explanatory. It's running the tire without inner tubes and using a sealant in the tire instead. You will need a specific tubeless wheel, tire, and valve. Most modern wheels and tires do already come set up as tubeless ready, but always check the specs before setting them up. And as usual, let's begin with the advantages. The rolling resistance is as fast and as low as latex with tubeless. This really is the main reason you would go for tubeless setups. But the second advantage that it has over a latex inner tube is that it also has a chance to seal punctures. It's not perfect, you're not gonna seal every puncture, but like I said, there's a chance that it will seal itself. Generally, tubeless is also pretty easy to repair. If you do get a puncture that doesn't seal, you can then just stick a tire plug in it, those little wormy things. Or if that fails, then you could just put a normal inner tube in there. So I still carry a TPU tube with my tubeless setups. Another advantage to tubeless is that it's also a fairly light option. It's lighter than latex, but a little bit heavier than TPU. Generally, you have about 40 grams of sealant in the tire. Whilst tubeless is a super fast and great race option setup, there are some disadvantages to it as well. It's usually pretty easy to set up, but it can be a pain, and it can take up a lot more time to set up a tubeless tire than it can to just stick an inner tube in there. You've probably also heard that it can be a lot messier as well, but I do think it's quite easy to become proficient at it, so you're not making a lot of mess when you're setting up this tire setup. Another annoying thing is that every three to six months, you should replace and clean the old sealant in the inner tubes, which is fairly frequent. This is one reason why I only reserve it for my time trial bike. If it's something that's important for you, air loss is variable between tire and wheel setups. And sometimes it's also variable between the front and the rear tire as well when you're running tubeless. So you do have to make sure you're pumping up the tire before each ride to make sure you have the right tire pressure. Depending on where you're racing, another big disadvantage is that it also has the chance for the tires to be pulled off the wheel of the rim. This is especially when you're running a hookless setup. But this generally only occurs in very extreme surfaces, such as cobbles like we see in Paris-Roubaix. And this is only when you're racing very, very hard on them as well, pushing the tires to their limits. This can also be countered by using tire inserts though. So if you still want the safety, tire inserts can be a massive advantage for you. As I said earlier, personally, I use this for my time trial bike as I think it's perfect for time trial and triathlon. This is because it's as fast as a latex setup, but as I also said previously, there is a chance for the tire to seal itself if you do get a puncture. And if you have to stop to change a puncture on a triathlon or a time trial, it's pretty much game over, race out the window. So if there's that small chance, I'm taking it. There are a lot of people that use tubeless for a normal road use. I find it's a lot of work running tubeless on multiple bikes, so I'd just like to save it for this one and use TPU for my normal road setups. There is actually one more tire setup out there, and I'm just gonna mention it quickly, and that is tubular. Tubular is an old school way of doing things where the inner tube is sewn into the tire, and then the tire is glued onto the wheel rim. Really, nowadays, you only see this on all the time trial wheels if you're buying them secondhand, but really it's died out tubular. 
It's a lot of work and generally uh, modern setups are now faster. They used to be used when racing as if you got a puncture, the tire was glued to the wheel so it was easier and safer to slow down on that puncture. Well everyone, once again, if you want to know where I got my rolling resistance data, I have that link to testing below on bicycle rolling resistance. This is of course my ways and my reasoning as to why and where I use these inner tubes and you may find that your situation is different. I would be very interested to know what you use, when you use them and why. Well everyone, this has been Cycling Unboxed, I've been Jason, I'll see you in the next video.